In this video, I'll be demonstrating how you can use InfraNotice, a text network graph analysis tool, to create knowledge graphs of your conversations with ChatGPT over time. In previous videos, we've demonstrated how you can access GPT functionality through the AI Insights module, or also through the text import module by chatting directly with 3.5 or 4. We have also have videos where we demonstrate how you can use InfraNotice extension to view the structural gaps, the topical clusters, and even chat with the content of a given page, which is also especially useful when working within ChatGPT. However, despite how useful both these tools are, they limit you to only seeing the discourse of one conversation. And if you're anything like me, you are working on several projects, exploring many ideas and asking kind of the same questions um, over time with ChatGPT. And so you have a long history of conversations, which um, there's so much information in there. And the question is, how do you organize? How do you curate? How do you leverage this inundation of information? And so that's what we're trying to explore here. And so to kind of demonstrate this, we created a a pretty rudimentary script, uh, which allows us to search the JSON file of, of the chat logs that you can export directly from ChatGPT. And so to show just briefly what this does, I can search the files, I can search by user, assistant, or both, I'll go with both, and I can search conversations or messages. I wanna search messages for any string. So in this case, let's search for the word language, and I will see all messages from across conversations that contain language, and I can send this to a CSV. Alternatively, I can search uh, for both user and assistant messages, but I wanna organize that by conversation. And in this case, I wanna find all conversations that contain the string God. And I can print these conversations to a markdown file. Now, why is this useful? Well, let's step into the InfraNotice app and we will see. So we will go ahead and we'll go analyze text content and let's start with the CSV of all of the messages containing the string language. And so we can see a CSV file right here. The message content are all the messages and as you can see, they come from several different conversations across time. Conversation unified theory of everything, graph machine learning capabilities, God known by many names, uh, text analysis tool, data processing, community intelligence, et cetera, et cetera. So in the first page, I'll be selecting the message content because that's what I want to go to the graph. And on the second page, I'm going to select the conversation title, the timestamp, and the author as tags for these statements. And I'll remember to set the timestamp column to the timestamp function. Now we'll go to create the graph. Now, just to recap, this graph is going to be a graph of all of the messages over time from all conversations that contain the word language. Now, why is this useful? Well, for me, um, language is a specific topic that I am particularly interested in, and I have explored that topic from a number of different perspectives or for a number of different reasons or different questions or different iterations of my ideas um, across many, many different conversations. And so I'm interested in kind of understanding the big picture of how all of the different ideas and um, conversations I've had with ChatGPT pertain particularly to the word language. And so I can see that right here, this is that graph. And we can see over here, this is the statements. So these are all the different messages and each is tagged with the conversation they come from, the timestamp, whether the uh, chat said it or whether I said it, um, and then it has the file it comes from as well. Now, um, most basically we can filter and so I can see, uh, I wanna show only the messages from the uh, assistant. So anything that only ChatGPT said uh, which is probably most of it. And so we can see that there, or alternatively, I can see only the things that I said. And so um, the difference between the, the amount of output is obvious. Um, but both these are kind of interesting because maybe on one hand, I want to uh, explore what is the overall uh, idea or dynamic of of the things that I am asking it. And so I can see the very nature of, of my initial thoughts and my um, and my questions, or if I want to see um, only the ideas that have been provided by ChatGPT, I could do that as well. Um, and so let's go back to show all. Another thing that we can do since we have um, 
the timestamps set as a CSV is we can view the graph dynamically. Uh, and so we can go over to this tool right here. I can choose to activate highlight statements in the network and I can um, start from the top and I can play. And so what we're looking at here is, is the evolution of, of my conversations pertaining to language uh, with ChatGPT. And so um, this can give me an idea of the, the chronological uh, conceptualizations um, that I've had, how my conversations over time have flown. Um, and if I want, I can even um, filter to a specific, a specific time range and only look at, at, at those messages uh, in particular. Now, to show you the other side, um, so right now we were only looking at the conversation, I'm sorry, the messages containing language, but what if I wanted to look at the conversations containing language? So I will go and do a new file and I'm going to import, in this case, I'm going to import, now we have a file containing the markdowns of all of the different conversations. And so you probably see a lot of the same names. So instead of it just being, um, in, in this case, instead of, instead of the conversations just being a tag, um, we are, the conversations are the actual organizing principle. And so we're gonna import these very similar to how you would import um, a, a vault from Obsidian. Um, and we can choose between uh, either connecting the content of the files or connections between the files. And I'm going to go with, I want to understand the connections across the different conversations. Um, and like every other imports, we can choose, do we want to graph the words um, or do we want to graph the words and the entities or just the entities? Let's go ahead and, and do both the words and the detec detected entities. And we'll send this to a graph. And so whereas the first graph was a graph of the particular messages, containing the word language. This is now going to be the entirety of the conversation, any conversation that I've had over time with ChatGPT that contains the word language. And it will be organized by those conversations. And so as the graph is loading, we can see over here, here are all the statements. And you'll notice one difference um, in these statements is, is that some words have these double brackets around it. And that's because we selected that we wanted to recognize entities as well. And so now we are graphing not only the individual words, but entities. And so it's recognizing something like artificial scarcity, which would typically be um, sent to the graph as two different words, artificial and scarcity, but it's recognizing artificial scarcity as a particular entity and will send that entire entity as a node to the graph. And so now we see in this graph of conversations a very different structure. And so you can immediately see that there's this, this kind of clustering that's happening and that clustering is based on clusters around the conversation. So we can see the conversations are identified um, with uh, these diamond nodes. And so I can see I have this conversation, God, known by many names. Um, I can see a conversation about uh, graph machine learning capabilities classification, uh, scarcity of knowledge. And, and so this can help me to not only understand the ways in which the content of these conversations are connected uh, within themselves, but also across all conversations. And with this structure, I can toggle on and off between whether or not I want to see uh, the actual conversational nodes or not. And so that's what I can do up here. I can go ahead and I can say, I only want to see the concepts. And so now that's going to remove the actual conversations versus the pages. or I can view them both. Now, another thing that we can do is if we were to import the CSV of messages containing God, so I'll do that real quick. Now, and it's the same format, so I'm going to go ahead and choose message content, tag with conversation title, timestamp and author role, connect timestamp to timestamp, and send this to the graph. Now, what's kind of interesting about this is um, 
is that I can now, I have one graph that is a graph of all of my messages containing language and, and another graph of all my messages containing the word God. Now, if I were interested in, which I am, the connection between uh, language and our perception of the divine, I might want to compare these two graphs. And so I can see how they overlap and how they connect. And so here's the conversations um, pertaining to the word God. And I want to uh, do a compare graph intersects with uh, the graph of messages containing language. And so now we will see this combined graph of both these entities, which um, is of course interesting to me. However, um, for you, it, whatever, whatever topics you may be interested in, and, and I use examples with very broad words, language and God, but you could search more particular strings. Um, and uh, the search functionality of how we create the files can of course be improved, but the, the fact remains that now we're looking at these conversations from, I'm sorry, these graphs that contain information from across conversations. And so we can kind of get a really good picture um, and understanding of how our thought is evolving over time in collaboration with, with um, GPT. And in the same way, I can go ahead and I can uh, do a time, a time view of this, uh, although this time, I'm, instead of highlighting, I'm going to filter. And I will start at the very beginning of time. I will filter, I will activate, and now we can see instead of just highlighting it inside of the graph and, and, and only showing in that in color, we're only going to actually, we're going to filter. And so we're only going to show um, the current nodes and connections um, for each statement as it rolls through time. And so you'll see what I mean as we play. And over here, we see the graph is going through all the statements. And so we can begin, begin to see how across two different topics, um, one about God and one about language, I can see how my ideas are being, um, how they're related uh, to the nodes around God and language. And so I can kind of get an understanding not only of the connection between these two topics that I'm interested in and discussing with, with ChatGPT across many conversations over time, but I can see the relationships of things between the two. And so for example, right now, um, at least in this particular point in time, uh, there's a lot of conversation around communication um, and communication as this connection point between language and God. Um, and so it's, it's in, in one respect, using InfraNotice for this, it helps you to kind of see the forest from the trees uh, because ChatGPT is an amazing tool but it produces so much information and, and oftentimes it's the question is how do we actually use this information? And so this is a step towards uh, the legibility of information and, and a, a, an ability for you to begin to distill and synthesize a variety of conversations over time. And now of course there's much more analysis that you could do and, and the YouTube channel features all sorts of um, different analysis tutorials which certainly apply to this. Um, for example, if we were to stop this right here, in this particular graph, uh, exploring the messages between uh, pertaining to language and God, if I want to maybe get down to the most central ideas, I can re increase the, the, the node filter threshold, and I can see uh, the very basics of, so at the most, and the most central idea is, you know, this conversation between uh, human and the divine, language as a technology of communication and I can and I can explore it as it develops becomes less central and I can see how the graph develops in terms of the its centrality um, I can explore some of the blind spots and so right now as as we're looking at these two graphs it's going to show me the graph similarity I can see how many nodes are the same across the two um, which are missing in one versus the other, or I can highlight in the graph itself particular gaps that exist between the clusters in these two graphs. And there's a lot of data here, and so it's, there's a little bit of a lag, but 
there we go. You can see it right there. It's showing me a, a, a gap between divine revelation and communication ethics. I can kind of circle through uh, or cycle through the different gaps um, and it will show me a new gap. And, and these structural gaps um, are essentially topical clusters that sh have a shared context, but could be more robustly connected. And right now with this very, very busy graph, it's a little bit difficult to see um, where these gaps are, but perhaps I want to create an AI insight question about the gap between language and theology and divine revelation. And so we will go ahead and we'll ask that, that insight question. And we can even then take this insight question right here and I can copy it and I can bring it to the import. I can turn on the AI chat feature. And now instead of just having the question show up here, um, anything that I add into this uh, import module will be sent to the graph. And so maybe I want to uh, develop these ideas even further. And so I'll go ahead and I'll paste the question I just asked. I'll send it to ChatGPT. And now the, the both the question I just asked will be added to the graph and the answer that is supplied will be added to the graph. And so this is a way that you can take the overall gestalt of the conversations that you're having with with ChatGPT pertaining to a particular subject and and develop them further, uh, synthesize them, distill them, and, and figure out a way that you can actually uh, leverage the massive amount of information that is being supplied to you through your investigations and, and, and um, conversations with ChatGPT. So uh, this is uh, just the start of this particular uh, feature that we're exploring within InfraNotice. Uh, we have this this script that is very, very basic just to test it out, but we are interested to find out if this is a feature uh, that our community is interested in. Um, and also we want to understand the different ways that you would want to be able to explore the uh, the conversations that you're having with ChatGPT over time. So I hope this helps. Feel free to ask any questions or supply any ideas and definitely like and subscribe for more. Thanks. Bye-bye.